Hi there. I'm Catherine Dines with Hunk to Bunk to Music, and today we're going to be investigating sounds. Why is it important to listen? What is sound? Where does it come from? And when and how do sounds create music? Let's get started with sound investigations. For this lesson, you will need the following things. You will need three different objects from your house, one cardboard box top or a large piece of white paper, some glue, a handful of three different kinds of pasta or beans from your kitchen, or a few toothpicks, pebbles, or leaves, or some colored paper shapes, five to six of each shape of three different shapes. Listening. Before we were born, inside our mother's wombs, it was a noisy place. This is what it might have sounded like. At 20 to 24 weeks, a fetus can also hear sounds outside of the womb. And at birth, will immediately recognize the sound of its parents' voices and turn toward that sound. So if those facts are true, wouldn't all humans be born knowing exactly how to listen? You would think so, right? Wrong. Listening is a skill that we have to learn and we have to practice throughout all of our lives. In today's noisy world, listening is one of the most important skills we can build, especially in times like these, when we're maintaining social distancing, staring at digital devices, and trying to express ourselves. Our emotions don't show while our faces are hidden behind masks. So listening promotes trust and creates deeply positive channels of communication. Listening also allows us to empathize follow instructions, and learn more effectively. These are some really fun games to try with each other at home or with your friends that um, are kind of a science experiment too. What I like to do is take boxes, different sized boxes, and place an object inside. I'm not gonna show you what the object is till the very end, that's the whole idea. But go ahead and place the object inside and then pass it to someone and see if they can identify what's inside the box. Shaking, you know, swirling, holding it to the ear, subtly turning it around. And then put the same exact object in a different size box. So here's a really nice one. It's a cardboard, long, skinny box. You can use any box, any container, as long as you can't see what's inside. Shaking it, seeing if it'll roll. It's not gonna roll. Hmm. And then, when you kind of take some good guesses at what it might be, you can open up the box and show everybody what it is. This one happens to be a safety pin. If you can see the light a little bit. And the safety pin can also go in the other box. And you can become, it can become a science experiment because the volume in this box is much greater than the volume in this little round box. One has square corners, one is round. So think about all the things you could do using shapes and volume to create interesting sounds using the same object. The other thing I like to do is close, close your eyes and imagine what a specific sound could be, again, without seeing the object. So you can't see this, I won't show you what it is, so go ahead and imagine what this could be. Tell me what you think it sounds like.
To me, it sounds like a crackling fire. But you know what? It's just an old plastic bag. How about this? Is it a typewriter? Nope. Is it a plastic horse going up a wall in somebody's room or toy chest? Nope. It's a stapler. So it's really fun to take household objects and see what kind of sounds they can create and you can create with them. Another thing you can do to promote listening is to create a sound story. And I've done this, so I'm going to get, play you an example in a minute, but it's really fun to tell a story just for our ears. And see if you can listen to these sounds that are recorded and tell me exactly what's happening in the story. Okay. <coughs> What kind of stories would you tell if you only had sounds to make? Could you tell the story of feeding your dog or perhaps going on a walk outside? There's a million stories you could tell. Even baking a cake or making some cookies. It would be interesting to see what those things would sound like. And I think one of the most amazing things about sound is when it's isolated, when we're only using our ears to listen, it takes so much concentration. And so that piece that we just heard only took about 49 seconds. But it seemed like a really long movie, didn't it? Because we didn't have any visuals to go with it. So think about the impact of sound on our lives. So what exactly is sound? Sounds are made of vibrations and they're things that we hear with our ears. So when sound, or when one sound travels through the air, it causes the molecules in the air to move and to vibrate in waves. So sound is, comes in waves. That's why sometimes when you're at a concert and you're watching something on a big screen and seeing someone on stage, there's a delay because it takes a long time for the sound to travel. Sound travels much slower than light. Um, sound can be made in many different ways. Generally, it can be plucked like a guitar or strummed or plucked. So each string of a guitar vibrates and if you notice on a guitar the lowest string is bigger and thicker and wound with little wires which makes it vibrate slow, more slowly than the highest string which is the same note but it's a tiny little string and it doesn't have the vibration that the bass note does. You can also create sound by blowing through objects, even your lips, like a whistle. I like this object because it makes a funny sound. It's just a tube, but because it has texture to it, sound when it travels through it might sound a little bit like a horn. <laughs>
flute is another instrument. Any kind of a tube that you can blow through, even a kazoo, is considered a kind of a horn. Sound also can be percussive, banged, like these cowbells. <laughs> loudly or softly. And I particularly love drumming. You can drum anything. You can drum your hand. You can drum a real drum. And you can drum your body. So drums are important because they connect with the heartbeat. And many people, many, many years ago, and even today, communicate through drums, many primitive peoples. So what sound qualities do language and music have in common? Here are some that I think have a lot in common. And I call them the four T's. We've got tempo, which is all, always rhythm or beat, okay? And a tempo can be fast or slow. We've got tone, which can be a single word or a sound that's very loud and harsh or very smooth and calming, like the difference between ah! versus ah. They're two very different ways of thinking about tone. Tone can also be high or low. Timbre is also an important aspect of sound. And um, timbre is a specific characteristic of a voice or an instrument, like the difference between a dog's bark and a cat's purr, or a guitar and a violin. So a dog and a cat are both vocalizing, but they have a very different sound when they, when they vocalize. They're both animals, right? Or even different dogs have different barks and different sounds, and different cats have different sounds to their purrs. Same with a guitar. A guitar and a violin both have strings, but they sound very different. And the last one is texture. And texture is the overall sound created by different sounds or instruments together. So a symphony would be considered a very complex and very full in texture, whereas a, say, a piano player with a solo singer would be considered sparse and simple. Here are some fascinating sounds that I've recorded and found that it's, it's quite unbelievable when you're really listening. So as you listen, think about four characteristics of sound that we just discussed. Think about tempo, tone, timbre, and texture, and see what you can hear as you listen. See what you think these sounds are, and if you can identify them, wow, I will be really impressed. Um, and let's get started. I will tell you after each one what it is, and they're really quite amazing. These are solar storms happening that were recorded by a spacecraft. And right now, some of the particles from that storm are hitting the spacecraft. I want to dance. Feel free to join me. Believe it or not, this is one person singing. He's learned to sing using two parts of his throat. He's a Tuva native person and uh, a very simple stringed instrument, very repetitive, and yet at the same time very rich and complex.
believe it or not, this is the sound of Arctic icebergs literally rubbing against each other in the polar regions. What an amazing sound, eh? What you're listening to is the haunting song of a humpback whale. Humpbacks are amazing animals, and their songs can sometimes last over three hours in length. In other words, the same pattern of these squeaks will repeat after three hours. Their music is some of the most haunting and most complex in the world. So think of it as being an oceanic opera. I love this last piece because these are people, apparently, the Bayaka. They live in the rainforests of the Amazon that sing literally all the time. And they just sing for the joy of it. Um, if you listen, you can hear the crickets, you can hear the rain, and the denseness of the forest in their voices, and yet there's just such a beautiful light sound. So now, using the three different objects that you found, and thinking about some of the definitions we've talked about, texture, tempo, tone, and timbre, Let's discover as many ways of playing the objects as a musical instrument. So the objects, here's some examples. These are the objects that I found. I, got, I found a piece of cardboard and it's got two flaps on it. And um, let's see, what could I do with this? I always like to look at the object first to see what the possibilities might be. I guess I could tap it. I could clap it. That's a different sound, and maybe it sounds different. Ooh, it's a lot louder that way. Um, I could blow through it. I could scrape it fast or slow, and oh, it sounds different on the tape than it does without the tape. Um, I could tap my fingers on it. So think about different sounds you can make out of each object that you brought. Here are my other two. A pen, a ballpoint pen. And again, I like to look at it and think about it. Obviously, we could click it. That's a pretty good sound. Uh, there's this little shirt holder where you could click it like that. Maybe a combination. But we only want to use one sound per object. Okay? Uh, what else could I do? I could uh, tap it on my head. And the last object I brought is my one of my favorite. I brought an egg beater. I just like the whirly sound that it makes. And you could do, let's see, what else could I do with it? I could do it like a different sound. I could tap on my hand. Okay, you got the idea? So play with your instruments and Find out what sound, what one, and then choose one sound and decide which sound you would like to keep to play with your instrument. We're going to come back to them in a few minutes. So for sure, remember which sound you chose and how you made it. 
Now, putting your objects aside, use your voice and make or say three different sounds or words. Practice each sound or word over and over until you can make or say each one exactly the same way every time. Got it? Take a little bit of time to do this. Again, it takes practice. Well, once you have your three sounds, remember each one. So now it's time to compose. We're going to take those sounds and compose a musical pattern. Could you use some of the terms we learned today? For instance, tone. Could you repeat one or more of the sounds to make them faster or slower? Could you change the tempo? Could you say one louder or softer than the others? Think about some different terms that we tried today. And now play with your sounds. Play with those three sounds until three of them sound really good to you. So the next challenge is, and the question I'm gonna ask is, what if you had to repeat those three sounds or create a musical phrase that you would have to repeat exactly the same way three times in a row? Could you do it? How would you remember it? Or how would you ever teach it to someone else? Guess what? It's time for notation, our next musical lesson. So with the things that you brought from your kitchen or that you found outside, those would be the three kinds of pasta or beans or uh, toothpick sticks and a leaf or three different objects, anything that you can find. What you're going to do is you're going to assign each one of your sounds to a different shape that you brought, okay? So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. This is a piece of pasta. I'm going to assign my sound mm, to that piece of pasta. So this piece of pasta is going to be mm. This piece of pasta, I have to hold it up against my skin. Oh, can you see it? It's a little stick and it's going to be That's going to be that sound. This piece of pasta, which is going to be woo, woo. Okay, so those are my three shapes that I brought, my three objects, and each one now has a sound. Got it? Again, you can use any three things you want toothpicks, um, leaves from outside, small pebbles. Um, you could even use big pieces of fruit, but we're going to have to glue this on a piece of paper to notate it. So remembering which sound or word goes with each of your shapes. Now we'll use the different shapes to create a pattern. And if you want to repeat a sound or a word, um, go ahead and use more pieces of that particular shape. And now play with the shapes on the cardboard or the paper until you compose a phrase that really sounds good to you. And the only way to get it to sound good to you is to say it back to yourself. I know that sounds crazy, but when I'm writing a song, I always sing it or say it back to myself until it sounds right. And there's no right or wrong because it's your ears and what sounds good to you. So go ahead and take some time and have fun with it. And take as much time as you need. It, it takes a long time to compose something that sounds really good. I'm gonna give you an example um, to get you started. This is my pasta phrase, and it's a pattern of the pasta. And remembering that the pasta sounded like, mmm, mmm, woo, mmm, mmm. Now, 
I know I noticed what I did. I changed a little bit of the way it sounded like at the end I went mmm mmm. That's okay because that's the next part of what we're gonna do. But go ahead and lay your things out in a pattern um, so that it sounds good to you. Another way you can do it is to use colored paper. And I went ahead and did different sounds for these colored pieces. So this one is like So or and then this one is and that's ha ha ha. So you kind of get the idea. You're just creating a pattern. And what you want to be able to do with your pattern eventually is be able to repeat it up to three times or teach it to someone else. Now that you have your musical phrase and you've got it down pat, and maybe you've memorized it, which is great, what would happen if you needed to teach it to others? What about the instruments that you're going to add to your musical phrase? Like the ones I brought. Think about where you might put your instruments and how it might sound with what you've already done. And put together a band. Of course, you'll need to show where the band will have to play and what instrument plays where and when and how long and how loudly. But you've got that. In this lesson, you've made some amazing sound investigations. You've learned quite a bit about composing, performing, arranging, and conducting. And it all started out with good listening. Nice work. Take care.